Hey, Open Telemetry and New Relic fans. Uh, I'm John Watson. I'm a lead software engineer here at New Relic. And uh, hopefully you caught my earlier video about the Open Telemetry architecture. Uh, today I'm going to give a little demo uh, about how to set up Open Telemetry to point at New Relic and send your telemetry data there. Uh, so this is going to be a, a demo of manual instrumentation and manual configuration. I'm not going to cover uh, auto instrumentation in this particular video, uh, but this should give you like a really good grounding on uh, how, what goes into the configuration of, of OpenTelemetry SDK and uh, New Relics exporters. So I've set up a little demo project here. Um, uh, it uses Gradle uh, because that's what we use here at New Relic. And uh, just a few dependencies that I've added to the project. Uh, so we've added the OpenTelemetry API so we can do some instrumentation. Uh, I've added the SDK so we can get that configured to send data. Uh, and I've added uh, our OpenTelemetry uh, exporter. Um, and it's just worth calling out uh, for this video, everything is using OpenTelemetry version 0.5.0 and our exporters, which uh, 0.5.1, which are in line with the 0.5 release of OpenTelemetry. All right, so uh, in this particular example, uh, I've, I've written a little main method. Uh, it does some kind of fake work here though. So we've got the, this method called do some simulated work. Like maybe this is, this is a batch job or something. Um, and then it does 10 little calls here to this uh, inner method. And then inside the inner method, we do some kind of work that takes some time, just simulating that way, uh, sleeping uh, some random amount up to a second. Um, and then just for fun, uh, decided to simulate that occasionally uh, an error occurs also uh, during this work. All right. So the first thing we want to do uh, is let's actually write some instrumentation. So we're going to use the OpenTelemetry API uh, to write some in instrumentation. Uh, we're going to start out by uh, doing some uh, tracing instrumentation. So we're going to be adding spans to each of these pieces of work. All right, so in order to do that, first we want to get a handle to the OpenTelemetry APIs. And we do that via getting uh, calling OpenTelemetry. We get access to the tracer provider, and then we're going to create a tracer. And let's just... Uh, all this Tom Relic Telemetry Demo is our tracer name. Uh, we'll assign that to a tracer. And uh, so if we want to use this tracer, uh, we create a new span. So we do that via span builder. This is part of the API specification. The uh, tracer has to provide the span builder. Uh, let's just call this particular span demo main because it's going to wrap the entire work that's done in the main method. Um, and then let's start that span. Save that in the variable. And then in order to use this, we uh, wrap this in a try finally block. Um, and we have what's called a scope in open telemetry. This is uh, kind of the, the scope of the execution of uh, execution of the span. So it's associated with the, the context. Um, we need to assign that to the variable. Uh, and then we basically just associate the, the span that we started with the tracer. Uh, and then we're going to wrap this whole thing in a try finally block. And finally, we want to always end the span. It's important to always make sure we end our spans, otherwise uh, we'll be leaking spans and they'll never actually get completed. All right, so now we've got essentially one span generated around our main uh, using the OpenTelemetry APIs. So that's great. Uh, but, you know, that's not super interesting. So let's, let's go and uh, do some tracing down uh, inside the method. So pass the tracer into our simulated work method. And then we'll kind of do the same thing that we were doing doing before. So we'll create a new span. Uh, let's call it uh, work span. Seems like a good name for it. Probably just work. Uh, start that span. Assign it to a variable. And then again, put it in a try final block. Uh, scope scope equals tracer dot with span. Pass in the work span. Wrap the actual work, and then, as I mentioned before, always end your spans. Cool. All right. So now we've got this uh, inner method. We've got this uh, this particular call wrapped in a span, but it could, you know, let's actually do a triply nested uh, trace here. So we'll get three spans within each within this main trace. All right. So we will pass the tracer in here to this inner method. 
And then we'll do the same thing that we're familiar with here. We'll create a new span builder, call this uh, inner method, because we're not very imaginative. It's all good. Uh, call that method, call that span inner method. Wrap it, everything in the scope. And as always, make sure to fill this in in a finally block. Awesome. All right, so uh, we've now basically wrapped all of the work here in, in a set of nested spans. Um, you know, I have this little boolean here about whether an error occurred. So an error occurred. Let's uh, let's add an attribute to this inner method that says error true. All right, so that'll at least uh, then uh, let's only do that if we have an error. All right, so uh, here we actually now annotated this uh, this inner span with the error attribute, saying that an error occurred if if one occurs in this case. Cool. All right, so now we've essentially uh, fully instrumented every method in this particular little uh, demo class uh, with some spans. So I can run this code, um, and I haven't installed an SDK, an open telemetry SDK, so there won't be anything actually happening. All of this instrumentation is essentially a no-op. Uh, so you can see nothing really happened, not very interesting, can't really figure out what's going on with our service. Uh, so in order to get uh, these traces to show up in the Relic, we actually have to configure uh, the open telemetry SDK and wire up our exporter. So let's do that next. All right, so let's just create a couple methods here. Um, set up open telemetry SDK, and then we're going to shut down the SDK at the end. So we're going to need these two methods. Uh, we always want to make sure to shut down the SDK so that all of the work that's in progress can be uh, sent to the, the telemetry backend, New Relic in this case. All right, so we create a method here. Let's create this method. Cool. All right. So let's implement these methods now. So in order to set up the, the uh, set up the open telemetry SDK, uh, we're going to want to get a handle to the SDK itself. And I've got a spinning beach ball of death. Let's do that. All right. So open telemetry SDK. We've got a access to a global here. We're going to get the tracer provider in the, from the SDK, and we're going to add a span processor to it. So a span processor. Uh, if you remember from the architecture video, this will uh, listen to all of the spans as they begin and end and uh, send them on to exporters as appropriate. Uh, so one of the span processors that comes built in to the SDK is the batch span processor, which will batch up uh, spans and send them to the exporter in batches. That's a little more efficient than doing it one at a time, although there are use cases for the, the simple span processor that does it one. But for now, we're going to use the batch span, batch span processor. Um, span processor uh, needs an exporter, so I'll just create a little span exporter variable, which we're going to initialize with the new relic exporter. All right. So we've added the span processor. Let's create our exporter. And it's pretty easy to do. Uh, do new relic span exporter. Uh, we have a builder for that um, as a build method. So in order to configure this, we're going to need an API key and a, and a couple other things. So API key, uh, for this particular demo, I have an environment variable uh, set with my insert key for uh, new relic. So I have that in system.getm, new relic API key. Really, you can use whatever environment variable you want, or you can hard code it, but I don't recommend that for any real use. Uh, so set the API key and then there's one more thing we really need to do um, and that's add an attribute that we're going to send uh, attached to every span uh, which is the service name. So do that by putting in service name and this service name uh, will allow the New Relic backend to identify that these spans are all coming from one source and then uh, create an entity for them. Cool. All right so We've got our new Relic span exporter, API key assigned, service name assigned. We've associated the span processor with 
uh, or it's associated with the exporter with the span processor that then, then is associated with the tracer provider. Cool. All right, and then we shut down. To shut down, we open clone trace SDK, get tracer provider, shut down. And as I mentioned, it's important to always shut down uh, your SDK so that all of the in-process spans can actually get flushed out to the back end. Cool. All right, so we've got um, what should be a, a, you know, a fully operational demo here. So uh, let's try running and see what happens. All right. So you'll see uh, we do get a bit of logging. I've turned on info logging uh, for this particular demo. Um, the batch data center from our telemetry SDK was configured with our backend trace API. Uh, and then at the end, of the end uh, we get a message from our telemetry client that it's uh, shut down. So it seems like everything's working. Uh, so let's go see if we can find some data. All right, so if we want to find data, we want to look uh, in New Relic 1. So let's go open up a browser window. Um, go to New Relic 1. So I'm just logged into my uh, personal account here in New Relic. I'm going to go to the Entity Explorer. Uh, I have access to a lot of things because I am a New Relic employee. Uh, but let's look at the scope things to my testing account here. So you can see uh, I've got some other you know, testing services that I've been playing with, but here's this uh, demo service uh, that I just stood up as a part of this. Uh, so if we take a look at this, we get this little uh, landing page, heads here, distributed tracing page, um, and you can see here's a span that we created. So here's this trace, uh, the demo main, is the, uh, so I named that, and uh, look at that. It's a trace with a bunch of spans in it. Um, and you can see the ones that air it out are marked in red. And you can expand this and you know, see what's going on here. So it's, you know, it's good to see here, uh, kind of in classic distributed tracing systems, uh, we almost certainly could probably optimize this code flow because we are doing a whole bunch of work in, in the series. We could probably think about parallelizing that. Um, I'm not going to do that optimization as a part of this, but uh, this is kind of the power of distributed tracing and uh, how the new Relic distributed tracing UI can really help you find this, this sort of uh, issues to make your services faster. Cool. All right. So there's our data. Um, so there's another piece to open telemetry, and that's metrics. So uh, I'm going to do take my, my, my sample app here and uh, just add a little simple counter uh, to count how many times we actually execute, this, uh, execute our um, simulated work. Well, probably this <clears throat> uh, this inner method call. Let's let's do that. All right. So as before, we want to start by uh, writing some instrumentation. So in order to write instrumentation, uh, the first thing you need to do is get access to a meter. And uh, similarly to tracing, uh, you can get these from the Open Telemetry Globals that meter provider, and we're going to uh, name the meter the same thing because it's easy. Cool, and uh, so what are we going to do with this meter? Well, as, uh, as you probably know, uh, meters give you access to instrument, instruments. So I'm going to uh, get a hold of a long counter. I'm going to call it uh, work finished. Uh, cool, I'm going to set description, uh, the number of work items that were completed. All right, so um, let's just clean this code up a little bit so it's a little easier to read. And then let's assign this to a, uh, yeah, work finished counter. How about that? Cool. All right, let's uh, pass this counter in to our simulated work method. And then now we've got a counter right there. and. Let's just count every time we do a piece of work. I'm just going to add one to it. Cool. So kind of the simplest possible metric instrumentation you could add. We just have a little counter here. All right. So as before, uh, we've, we've written the instrumentation using the Open Telemetry metric APIs, uh, but we haven't actually configured the, the metric side of the SDK. So that's the next thing that has to happen. All right. So very similarly, Although not exactly the same, uh, we need to use the Open Telemetry SDK meter provider uh, to do this configuration. 
So let's start by creating a new relic metric exporter. All right, so we have new relic metric exporter. Uh, we're going to build it. We're going to send the API key in the same way we did before. I'm actually just going to copy a couple lines of code here. Um, same API key. We're going to set the same common attributes so that the new relic backend knows to associate these metrics with this demo service that we've created. Oops. All right. So we have a metric exporter. So how do we use one of these things? Um, so New Relic uh, is, is kind of a, uses a push-based export model so that the, the SDK will push that data uh, via the exporter to New Relic on a timed interval. So in order to do that, uh, we create an interval metric reader. This is a, a class inside the OpenTelemetry SDK. Uh, we're going to build one of those. We're going to set the metric exporter on it. Uh, and we're, the other thing we need to do is we need to tell it what is going to be producing the metrics. And what's going to be producing metri the metrics is the OpenTelemetry SDK meter. So OpenTelemetry SDK, get meter provider, get metric producer. Oh, uh, we need to look once an array of them. So let's just put that into a singleton set. Cool. Um, yeah, and then let's build that. So when we build this interval metric reader, it will start a background thread that uh, will process these uh, process the metrics and send them to the exporter on a timed interval. Uh, yeah, so the metric reader, oh, forgot one thing, and that's actually, let's uh, set the export interval. Let's set it to export every 10 seconds. Uh, I think it defaults to a minute, but uh, that's really short, and we can we want better time to last than a minute. Um, so let's make it 10 seconds for right now. We could do it as, let's say, yeah, 10 seconds seems good. We could do it as small, as fast as we want. Uh, Neural backend doesn't have any problem with it. It's just a matter of uh, how much network traffic you want to be generating between your service and, and New Relic's backend. All right. Um, so the other thing I had mentioned is that we want to be able to shut down uh, the SDK when we're done with it. So metrics work a little bit differently uh, than tracing at the moment. So in order to do this, we're going to um, actually just, we're going to, we need to shut down the metric reader, the interval metric reader when we're done. Uh, so let's just return that from this method so that we can use it. All right. So now up here, assign this to the metric reader, and then we'll pass that into the shutdown method so that we can do all that shutdown in one place. All right. And then when we shut this down, enable metric reader, shut down. Simple as that. Cool. All right. So now we have wired up the uh, metric meter, the meter SDK with the New Relic metric exporter. And we've done a little uh, sample instrumentation uh, by, by <clears throat> having a counter uh, that is incremented for each piece of work that we do. Great. All right, so let's run this example again and then see if we can go find our data. All right, kick this off. Uh, you'll now see uh, in the logs here that we actually also have configured a metric uh, sender. And then we shut it down, shutting down both the uh, telemetry clients from both of these two sources. Cool. All right, let's go back to New Relic 1 and see if we can find this data. All right, so if we want to find data, find this data. I thought I should just make sure distributed tracing is still working. Should just be, should be fine. Should have another span, so the data hasn't quite gotten there yet. Um, but let's go and take a look at these metrics that we should have generated. So all of the, the metrics that are generated uh, for New Relic Dimensional Metrics uh, end up in the metric namespace. So if we look at just kind of everything, you can see that we have sent some metrics in the last half hour. So that's not very interesting, just means we've gotten actually just sent some raw metric data. So let's select some of this, uh, what did I call it, work? What did I call it? Let's look at that. I called it the work finished. Work finished. Uh, let's do a time series on that. Uh, let's have the data, or else I'm not using the right syntax. There we go. So here you can see uh, we've got this kind of total work finished. And then here's the amount of data. We have 10 pieces of work. That's what we should have done in our example. Uh, I'll run it again. 
just to generate a little more data and uh, should again be being sent on kind of that 10 second interval so the time of the glass should be pretty good um, there we go so we can see a second item just came in great so uh, there we go we've got spans we've got traces we've got metrics all this data flowing from using open telemetry as our apis into new relic uh, and it's all working great um, so that's the demo uh, thanks for taking the time to take a look at it uh, we have a very similar demo uh, in our exporter repository uh, it's both uh, referenced in the readme itself and then we have some runnable code in that exporter repository uh, that you can take a look at and do, do this yourself so thanks for your time. Uh, again, my name is John Watson, and uh, this has been a demo about open telemetry and sending your data to New Relic. Thanks.